Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about understanding why it is important to use the exact same lift when tracking your own progress, your own personal progress, as well as comparing strength between other people, because we see a lot of that online as far as people, uh, number one, thinking that their strength has improved and they've totally changed the way that they've done an exercise, maybe in a way that allows them to more easily lift more weight and they actually think that it's progress on a lift and if you're trying to program progressive overload that can be a problem and I'll give some examples in a minute as well as people comparing different people uh, doing different variations of a lift and actually thinking uh, one person is stronger than another or anything else uh, based upon a very very different exercise just because they have more weight on the bar. Now, for a lot of people, they're going to say, well, that's really counterintuitive. This is common sense. No one is dumb enough to actually do this. No, guys, this happens every single day online, and it happens in gyms all the time. It happens in gyms all the time. And so that we can understand the difference, step back and look at why you have standardized exercises for strength comparison in any sort of competition. It's to legitimately see who's stronger, not necessarily who can cheat the most weight up through any means necessary, learn cheating techniques and everything else. Uh, lifts are oftentimes picked for comparison based upon is this person actually stronger or not? And that's why you see things like uh, powerlifting have standardized rules. And in fact, they used to use the strict press there and the strict press has always been the strict standing press has always been a strength standard, right? It's always been a strength standard, but because people started finding really creative ways to cheat on the strict press and pretty much turn it into a standing bench press, uh, it was removed because people realized, look, this became an issue of just who could create the most back flexibility. People were getting hurt doing it, doing like a bent press and everything else. Uh, and it got completely removed from powerlifting because they're just like, this is no longer a real competitive lift because people have found really weird ways to cheat at it. Uh, that fall within the confine of the rules. And I'm not saying people haven't done the same on the bench press because a lot of people have. Uh, and that hasn't had it removed, but uh, the standing press was removed for that reason over time. Uh, that's why when they've added things like the curl now, the strict curl to certain powerlifting feds, it's done in a manner to where they can eliminate all cheating. That's why the head and the butt have to remain in contact with the pad behind you standing up. Your knees have to be locked. Your feet can't move. Uh, it's to keep you from cheating, to see, okay, who actually is strongest on the curl. And you see that a lot when people start comparing the lifts, and, and the bench press is one of the big ones. And people don't seem to understand your bouncing bench pressed off your chest isn't indicative of what you can actually press. And the reason is because you're using inertia to bounce the weight off of your chest like a spring. That's not your chest getting the weight started. And the problem you run into is that when you compare one person's bounce benching to another person's, you can't make a valid comparison because one person might have really mastered the technique of bouncing. And one person can get 80 pounds out of it and another person only gets about 10 pounds because they haven't mastered how to cheat at the lift correctly. And so they might be similar strength levels, but the other guy can outlift the other by 60 pounds on the bench press just because he's better at bouncing even though they might actually be uh, in the same level of strength if they were compared apples to apples and forced to do it the exact same way. So that's why you have standardized lift. That's why ranges of motion are set. That's why these things are set. And people have a bad habit of comparing and they'll see, oh man, this guy does pulls off blocks with this weight and that's so strong. But then you find out their, their pull from the floor is 100 or 150 pounds less. Um, keep that in mind. And people get really caught up in the numbers and not understanding that numbers, when cheating and there's nothing in place, there's no rules in place to actually control how much you can cheat or your range of motion or anything else on an exercise, people can oftentimes lift a lot more weight than if they were in that classification. And one of the big excuses a lot of people use online, well, I don't do that because I'm not a power lifter. Yeah, but you, no one should be comparing your strength then to people who are doing uh, a different variation of the exercise. You can't because it isn't an apples to apples comparison. It's a completely different exercise. A bouncing bench press is a different exercise uh, than pausing on the chest. It's a totally different exercise with a different muscle recruitment pattern and a different uh, leverage is everything. It's totally different and one of them you can obviously lift more weight than another. By removing the bounce, you're forcing people to use their actual real muscles involved to get the weight started and lift. So you can actually more accurately judge who's stronger. 
and and the same thing when we change around different different exercises uh, deficit deadlifts versus conventional deadlift versus a rack pull you can't compare those to each other in individual to individual unless they're all using the exact same variation under the same rules with some variation that doesn't allow for cheating because if any variation of a lift allows you to cheat obviously some people are going to be better at cheating and using body language and everything else to, to flip a weight up so that little spiel aside why does this matter for our training programming why does this matter for us as individuals if we're not comparing ourselves to others well people have a habit of doing the same thing uh, and you see it repeatedly. I mean, the bench press is the number one most easy example to use because we see it every day. It's America's most popular lift. It's America's favorite lift. Uh, and obviously in a lot of other countries they care too, but in the United States it really is in gyms and has been for, for generations. Uh, because the bench press is an exercise that allows you to cheat and not use your chest and triceps and delts to get the weight started. A lot of people will start out benching a certain way and they'll touch and go and, and everything else and they'll start tracking their progress and at a certain point they'll stall and they'll start cheating the weight up. They'll start using more bounce off their chest. Or I've seen people who use a little bit of an arch and they bring the bar down to their chest and then use leg drive and get their chest started and hit the bar. I have literally seen people do this and I'm talking people who've been lifting a decade and they'll get stronger on their bench. They add, they can, instead of doing five reps with uh, 250, they can now do five reps with 275 or 280 by using that technique. But you guys see the point with all of this, whether you're bouncing or, or doing any of this stuff, you're not actually getting stronger. You're not making the muscles work harder just because you have more weight on the bar. You're using external forces to get the weight started and drive the weight up. So if you're tracking your progress this way, you're all of a sudden, going to have several months where you're like, man, I've added 30, 40 pounds to this exercise for my work set. So I don't mean your max, we're talking your five rep, your eight rep, your 10 rep sets, right? But you're like, my chest hasn't grown. I, I don't, my chest hasn't gotten any bigger. My shirts don't fit any different. My triceps got a little bigger. My chest didn't. And then when you're forced to actually use the lift against someone else, you find that you didn't gain any strength. Even though you've added 30 or 40 pounds to your work sets, you actually turns out later you didn't gain strength and you didn't stimulate much new muscle growth. Why? Because you're using an easier version. You switched from a specific variation of an exercise to a different variation and it'll mess up your training programming. The thing that you need to understand, if you're going to track your training, because numbers are everything, progressive overload is everything. But progressive overload, when you cannot track it anymore because you've used a different variation of an exercise, you have no means of controlling it. You have no means of programming it. And if you can't do that, you have no way of guaranteeing your own progress in the gym. And what I recommend to people, if you want to do variations of a lift, okay, fine. If you want to do some touch and go bench instead of pause bench, uh, that's your prerogative. I'm not a fan of touch and go bench, but you might be. Don't count them as the same exercise say what that's how people in say the west side system the west side training system the conjugate method these guys train maxes on as many as 18 or 20 different exercises they're all variations of them they keep separate notes on each one they count them as a different lift in other words they might actually train four maxes on the pause bench the touch and go bench the one board press the two board press the three board press the floor press a press with chains, a press with bands, a press with reverse bands. Say so that that might be all the different lifts they track their maxes on. Because they know that each of those exercises is different, they don't ever compare them to each other. They keep separate notes and track what their previous max was on like all 12 or 13 of those different exercises. Because they might go through and max on each of those lifts two or three times every single year. So what guys do in that sort of system and I, is they track them separately. And I would recommend the same thing to any of you. If you change the variation of an exercise that you do, whether it's going from high bar squat to low bar squat, touch and go bench versus pause bench, cheat curl versus strict curl, a dead hang chin up versus skipping the bottom. Okay, that's fine. You, you want to do these variations. That's okay, but you need to find a way to consistently track your progress and you need to count them as different exercises. In other words, do not count your touch and go bench as a pause bench as the same exercise. Track them separately because your progressive overload is going to be different.
because you're going to have a different weight on the bar because you are going to be able to move more weight on one versus the other. And if you switch in the middle of any training program in your progression pattern to a variation of an exercise that changes the amount of weight you can physically lift with the same muscles, you have to track it separately. Otherwise, you're going to end up messing up your progressive overload. And you're not going to be able to keep up with it. Uh, so that's my recommendation. As soon as you change to any variation of the lift, and literally the, the tempo like that is a, is a variation. Touch and go versus a pause is a different exercise. You need to track it as a separate exercise and don't compare your numbers between the two because they're not going to be an apples to apples comparison. They're not going to tell you how much strength you've gained and therefore you have no prediction of how much muscle mass you're going to gain either if you're counting them as the same lift. It will totally mess up your progression. All right guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.